Have you ever thought about how much government has power over your life? During COVID, government told you to stay at home. You had to wear a mask. You were, if you wanted to travel, you had to get vaccinated. If you wanted to meet your friends, you had to go online. Now, government really is a necessary part of our society. Like, if you believe in man-made climate change, then you would expect government to take care about that. If you think that there is an energy crisis, and it's quite cold in here actually, <laughs> then you would expect government to provide for water and electricity. Even if you just want to get a family, you expect government to provide for schools, to provide for public transportation, for childcare, and even for money of father and motherhood. So, government seems to be really important. Do you think that government is an important industry in your life? Do you think that government has to be well organized? Well, I would believe so. I would say government is really, really important. I'm not talking about politics. And I'm not talking about political parties and their power games. I am talking about the executive branch of government. I'm talking about public administration. Now, when you're studying here, for example, you learn a lot about all the sexy organizational models, flat hierarchies, digital organizations, uh, you know, you name it. And at the other end of the continuum, there is bureaucracy. How boring. But let me tell you something. I've been working in a public sector organization for 30 years. This one. And I was privileged enough to have a job in which I could be creative, solve problems pragmatically, decide directly, and have an impact on society. Let me repeat that for you. Be creative, solve problems pragmatically, decide directly, and have an impact on society. Now, okay, I'm a professor at the university, so this is really different. But according to my experience as a professor of public management, working with public sector organizations for 30 years, I know that in the public sector, there are many people who want to have an impact, who want to be creative and innovative. If we just let them do it, if the four criteria are met. But it's not happening. It's not. Why not? We have digital, and this is the topic of today. We have artificial intelligence, we have blockchain, we have data models for predictive government. It's not happening. Organizations, public sector organizations just could apply it. But so many are not doing it, or not sufficiently doing it. What's keeping them off? Let me tell you a story of a city that I call Silvila. Silvila doesn't exist. The name is borrowed from a tale of a very famous Swiss author, Gottfried Keller. You can also call it XY. Well, in Silvila, they found that old people who live at home are much happier than their peers who live in an elderly care house. And what's more, it's much cheaper to ca take care of them in their home than in an elderly care house. So that's a win-win situation, isn't it? Let's do it. So the City Council of Sildvila started thinking about programs for keeping the old people at home, in their houses. So, and the standard reflex of a bureaucratic organization is raise an organizational entity, get them a budget, hire civil servants to do that. In terms of my perspective, somebody who studies bureaucracies, that is, solve the problem by growing the organization. And most probably, you grow the, the bureaucracy as well. But we don't have to repeat what we've always done. We can do it differently. We can be creative. We can solve problems pr pr uh, pragmatically. We can decide directly. And we can have an impact. And here comes digital. 
If you look at the elderly care as a market, you will see that there is supply and demand. On the demand side, we have the old people looking for treatment and for help to stay at home as, as long as possible. On the supply side, we have private organizations who offer many solutions tailored to the specific needs of the old people. If government was Uber, they would just create the platform to link the two sides. They wouldn't get involved in the delivery of the services. So that would be really efficient. And what Sildvila does as a smart city is they copy the model of Uber. They de de design a digital platform on which the two sides, two sides are linked. But providers are really creative, and it really works. One nonprofit organization even offered a solution in which they earn more money the longer these people stay at home. That's really clever, isn't it? It's efficient, it's effective. Old people profit from these solutions. That's what we call a service model. The service model is called government as a platform. And in this service model, there is like a standard thing. You can apply it to other policy areas as well. You can apply it to public transportation, to social welfare, to education, and it works. So being intrigued by this fact, my team and I, in our research, started looking for service models all over the world. Now, if you think that's a simple task because government is boring, you're wrong. We found not less than 45 different service models applied in core public administration. That's amazing. Many of these uh, service models can only be applied in a public sector context because they are very specifically linked to services that are done by the government. For example, if government takes on the role as of a guardian of the public goods, they may be responsible for everything that is well-being in society. For example, by enforcing laws. Then the service model is called a sanction. Sounds strange, doesn't it? Service, sanction, but it works. Sometimes government is responsible for the management of scarce resources, like raw material, clean air, safety, water. Then the service model is a concession to exploit the raw, mater raw materials, or a permission to demonstrate in public places. Government can also take on other roles that are specific to its own function, like in a role of a funder, they pay for services that are delivered to the society by others. Again, government doesn't have to do it itself. Government can make others do it, collaborate with the private. For example, startups often produce goods that are very good for the society, in areas like sustainability, for example. Think of a young cooperative that installs solar panels in the neighborhood and sells the energy, distributes the energy to its members. Well, that's a good thing, isn't it? The problem is that they need, they need initial investments and they need money for these initial investments. So who, who's giving them the money? Here the service model could be seed money or a startup loan that has to be repaid after the thing is successful, repaid to the government. The government can actually help them to start and then they go on on their own. This is a really good thing and it's a really clever service model because it allows government to profit from the creativity of others. And of course, all these things wouldn't be possible without 
digital means that government applies. Now, this is not the place to explain all the 45 different service models. I don't want to bore you. But let me mention just a couple of other models that you know, are not that government specific, but a little more like the private sector. For example, during the COVID lockdowns, many young companies, um, small companies, uh, restaurants, sports facilities suffered of the, because of the lockdown. So the Swiss government decided to take measures against their being going bankrupt. So what they wanted to do was they wanted to pay loans in a quick and efficient way so that they could overcome their liquidity crisis. However, there is no administration who can do that. No civil servant who is trained in giving out loans. It's a totally new task. And you know, it takes a long time to really build up an administrative structure that is able to do that. Would be all, all the companies would have been bankrupt before they did that. So they decided to collaborate with the Swiss banks. The banks can do that. That's the expertise that is needed to really pay out these loans in an efficient way. What the government did was they guaranteed for the loans. So the bank had no risk up until 500,000 Swiss francs. There was no risk for the bank when they gave out the loan. That is a wonderful service model that really made these private organizations you know, create a public value in this situation. It's amazing. I find it amazing. You should go like, whoa. <laughs> now, a government that is able to really understand these different service models and to be able to play on the keyboard of the 45 options that we found is a government that is also able to make it happen and to create an, an impact. But how do we get there? By encouraging them to play with these service models. Try them. In our workshops, we ask the civil servants to randomly pick one of these 45 service models and apply it to the already existing services that they do. Sometimes the match is a bit weird, you know, so really bad. But in most of the cases, these organizations and the civil servants are able to come up with really innovative ideas. You know, how would my service look like if it was done on a platform? So it's really amazing what they come up with. Like, what if we didn't just assign number plates to a car in an administrative way? What if we sold them in a digital auction, online auction, to these people who are interested in having original number plates. Well, okay, sorry. <laughs> it already exists, I know. In Saudi Arabia, this year, the highest price paid for a number plate was 165,000 US dollars. In Switzerland, the record holder is Zug number 10. 233,000 Swiss francs for a number plate. And you cannot sell it. You just have it. Well, you can, you can pass it on in your family. That's possible, but not outside the family. I mean, what a car do you drive if you buy a number plate like that? Maybe a nice bicycle. <laughs> well, innovative service models require a public administration that is able to think out of the box. We have to create the environment for them so that they're allowed to be creative, solve problems pragmatically, decide directly, and have an impact. It's not just technology. No digital solution will be implemented in the public sector without teams of civil servants who are willing enabled and allowed to really do that. Let them try. Let them play. Let them make small mistakes in small steps. 
let they come out with creative solutions, creative services, and let them have an impact on society. Thank you.